we're going to be going over SWIFT. And we're hiring, which we'll discuss later. All right, so SWIFT's, SWIFT sample of SWIFT. Who wants to try to say that real fast? Come on. Swift. 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 Not do an impersonation of the car box. Alright, so anyway, on Twitter, I am Finnick and Hell. So you can shift, send me a tweet. Alright, so tonight we're going to go over Swift. You know, how popular is Swift? Which is kind of the first question people ask when they're looking at the Twitter, right? How, who uses this thing, right? Uh, where is it used? Uh, what are some of the basic and advanced items that you're going to see? So it's like an overview of what you're going to see. That way you can like allocate space, you know, in your brain. And uh, then we'll actually show you some coding examples using this really cool technology called Playground. So Apple made this thing called the Playground that you can go play in and do some Swift on it. Uh, it works on iPads, it works on the uh, Xcode, which is our editor, our IDE. So we'll be using the editor, uh, the IDE, here tonight. And there's some Swift learning resources. So Swift, popular, so popular. So you can see in 2014 it was, eh, and then in 2017 it's really high. And so it's all about the iPhone and the iPad and other things, which I will go over. Uh, it's worth noting that before Swift, there was this language called Objective-C, which is why we have both in our app. And it's meant to be a replacement for Objective-C. So, you know, it's like, you know, iPhones, it's on me! Oh, wait, Swift. <laughs> So in Stack Overflow, in terms of like the most loved languages, which specifically means you know, those that are currently developing with the language and have expressed an interest in continuing to do it. So it's like, okay, I'm using this thing and I'm happy, right? So Swift ranks number four, and Java ranks 17, which is, you know, that's, that's not too shabby. And you'll note the percentages, they overlap, right? Because, I mean, 63 plus 50, right? That's over 100. So. There's, there's definitely some overlapping there. I don't know how much, but they both they can coexist peacefully. Uh, the most dreaded is Objective C. It ranks sixth, <laughs> and then Java ranks 19, 49.5%. Uh, <laughs> so, you know. Okay. So, yeah, the point of Swift, according to the documentation at Swift.org/about, is to replace the C-based languages. So not just Objective-C, but C and C++. Okay, so we're Swift. So it's on the iPhones and the iPads, like I mentioned, but you know, it's on desktop, desktop apps too. It's also the watch, so you can make apps for the watch, which is fun. It's also can be on your TV. So we have there's a thing called Apple TV, and you can create apps for the TV, which is really cool. And uh, side note, um, sometimes Carfax has hackathons that explore these various things. Sometimes they come to fruition on a product, and sometimes they don't. So there you go. And then on the server side, you can also do Swift. So you know, I'll, I'll make my slides available uh, so that people can uh, look at this at their leisure. On the server side, there's uh, server side frameworks such as Paper, Perfect, Futura, Zimu, Zimu, I don't want to say that, and, uh, and so on. And at the, the last few slides actually have the links to where I got this information from. So you want to Google it yourself. All right, so let's begin the fun. Enough talking about what we're going to talk about. It's so meta. All right, so Swift syntax. So it, got, it has the stuff you'd expect. You know, it's got constants, it's got variables. It's got the basic types like you know integers, uh, strings, arrays, dictionaries, which is another in Java speak that would be called a map. Um, the common one that I used to use was hash map. Mm -hmm. So that thing, yeah. 
And then uh, it also has optionals, which will, again, we'll talk about all of this in depth. This is just an overview. So optionals on how to handle rules, just like Java's null. And the basics, like if, for, switch, while, all that. Tuples, that might be new to some people. Functions, hey, there's a surprise. Classes, enums. Oh, you're going to love enums and switch. So powerful. Uh, closures. <laughs> Uh, I should back up. Enums, another word for that is enumerations. You'll see. So closures, structs, generics, inheritance, and protocols, and protocol extensions, which are like Java's interface idea. And so all of these things are available at the language guide. At a bit.ly link that I created just for you, <laughs> so j.mp slash swift basics with a big B. So that way you don't have to do the URL like it. And the URL is like this long. So, so there's some awesome cool ideas you know, around this in the iOS world, such as a model view controller, might not be new to some. Or the model view view model plus services, which is a way to make without getting into it deep. It, you start with model view controllers and then you've got these things that have all this code in one file and you're like, okay, this stinks, we don't like this. And so then you go that route and you go, oh, <laughs> this is a much happier place. But we have no time to talk about it even though I want to talk about it so bad. So uh, <laughs> feedback, if you say, like, you know, we'd like to hear about these concepts, uh, let us know. Uh, especially this one, because this is not just Swift. There's like Rx Java, right. all kinds of things like that. So. Okay, real coding examples. Let's go there. Uh, one note, for those who are using Xcode, uh, the editor, and I found this after much searching, you want to make sure that the playground that you're playing in, the playground that you're playing in, you want to make sure that this playground that I'm showing you or any playground you come across is in rendered markup, right? Because when I was looking, learning Rx Swift and playgrounds were new to me, I was looking at it like raw markup, but I'm like, okay, this is supposed to teach me what? <laughs> so, just in case you've ever come across that. Okay, a Swift example sample. That does absolutely nothing. <coughs> All right, so we're gonna. Just go through some of the basics here and, and play and, and run code. So, I mean, here's a constant, the concept of a constant. The concept of a constant is that I have a value, I can't change the value. Um, something bad will happen if I try to. So, this is what happiness looks like. Which, by the way, this, this is saying hey, if this variable contains this really happy emoticon, then it says happy person. So that's a glimpse at stuff coming up. So if I change this and try to change a constant, uh, bad things happen. Dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. Who knows that movie? <laughs> what? Original Ghostbusters. Original yeah, Ghostbusters. Right. And yes, I believe you know it too. I believe you. All right, so don't try to change constants because that's just bad news bears. All right, variables. Now here's something interesting. <laughs> Let me comment this guy. Whoa, that is a Mac feature. Yeah, that's the interesting thing. When you go from Windows to Macs, at first you'd be like, why is he doing all this crazy stuff? And then after a while you're like, I love how it lets you do this crazy stuff. This Macs are awesome, in my opinion. Okay, so the point of this little example is to show you that, you know, if I have a variable, I can change its value. But what's really interesting here is the name of this variable is an emoticon. Because you can do that in Swift. Now, I don't have that in my standing, or my coding standard doesn't say don't do that, but don't do that. <laughs> in production code. <laughs> can you use the search for the emoticon and find them? Sorry, what? Can you use the search function in somewhere and find Emoticons in the global code <laughs> file. Yeah, the, the all-inclusive answer is whatever you can do in terms of naming variables and naming things, you can use emoticons. <laughs> it's all like Unicode. Okay. 
<laughs> it's funny. Yes. I it's <laughs> one time I actually had this, this, someone knew Klingon as a Star Trek language, and they said, "If you don't put English in the coding standard, then I'm going to write it in Klingon." Really? Okay, you put it in the coding standard. You have to use English, not Klingon. So anyway, this is uh, showing that. An if statement, so yeah, if the clown <coughs> equals kids love me, then it's saying we're lying because that's a scary clown, in my opinion. Especially the shade of gray kind of thing. Um, otherwise, it prints out whatever the value is inside this variable, which is scary clown, change me. So we'll change them real quick. Because it's fun. And you are lying. So there you go. Let's move on to the next thing. All right, so the basic types. And some interesting ways to declare the basic types as soon as I stop flipping that around. So, so this is the standard, okay, I want an integer. Uh, so I declare a variable sum int. I'm not that tall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so that variable is a type integer, and I'm assigning it to the value of 3, constant. If you're going to assign a value as part of its declaration, then it'll go ahead and infer what the type is. Type inference, yeah. Type inference. Type inference. I knew it was on the tip of your tongue. Yep. I had to be, I had to type inference. <laughs> so, same thing with the string. Uh, this is showing, hey, you know, you can also use the initializer, and so we have to call initializers in Java you call the constructors. constructors. Keep it doing. I'm, I'm going to actually like pause. Well, you're bilingual, you. Mike. You no, know both you. these languages. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yes. So, that's how you can do a string if you want. Gracias, senor. <laughs> I actually took like a year of Spanish and then I forgot most of it. <laughs> Which is sad. I love, I love my language. Okay. So this is interesting. So in Swift, you can have two different ways of doing things like arrays and dictionaries and such. So one way is a shorthand way, which is why it's first. You can use the brackets, and you say, this will contain an array of integers. So you can put as many integers in there as you wish. Uh, the longhand way is to say, OK, it's type array, and it's using generic. So it's saying, you know, I handle ints. So if that was a string, it'd be an array of string. In this case, it's an empty array. And just for completeness, in this case, we have three integers in there. So it's very readable. So here's the examples of dictionaries, AKA and JavaScript uh, apps. So a dictionary has key value pairs. So this is one key, va key value pair. So here's the key, some key, and then the value that's associated with that key some value. And so what we're doing is we're saying, hey, could you pull from this dictionary the value associated with some key? I'll pull it out. Now, here's the thing. If I put foo in here, and there is no foo, well, it could be nil. So this is leading mm -hmm. us into this concept of optionals, which we're about to get deeper into. Those that were early got the sneak peek. So that was fun. Uh, but anyway, so you end up with this thing, some <coughs> optional of type string optional. Yes, string optional. And then what we do, so we're going to print out, you know, what is that type, and you'll see that it's, that I'm not lying to you, that I'm not mistaken, that it is of type optional string. And then we say, well, let's print out the value. So on line 20, you can see that it says 20. We're printing out what the whole thing is. What, does the, what is the value of this optional? And it says, yeah, this is an optional, and inside of it is some value. And then if we say, you know what, let's unwrap the optional. Let's get rid of the thing that's containing uh, the value. Just give me the value. Exclamation point. I really mean it. And so then it prints out the some value. Yes, David? On 18, you got it forward. All right. Slash that you, on 21 you got a slash, but they're different. 
what, what does the slash do and why is it different? Right. So the backslash, this is string interpolation, which is a fancy way of saying that from in between these parentheses, so it's like backslash parenthesis, and then end right there. Yeah. It says, I want to print out the value of this expression. I want to print out the value of this thing. Okay. So they are more similar. And when I say print it out, I will print it out, what I mean is, I want the value of this thing, and it's going to be part of this bigger thing that is going to get printed off. It's confiscating the variable. Yeah, exactly. Confiscating the variable. See, I should totally co present. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, similar to your example with the array, would a valid type uh, declaration when you're setting the constant be that optional angle bracket string? In the same way that it was an array angle bracket and. So if I go back to the array string, and by the way, David, if I didn't answer your other question about why are they different, let's go back to that. You did. Oh, good. <laughs> I can sleep. Yay. <laughs> oh, here's, here's the code. So. What line number? Uh, so comparing line 12 to line 16, would you be able to replace uh, the type on line 16 with uh, optional angle bracket string? Oh, yeah, optional angle bracket. Yes. Do you know this stuff already? <laughs> no, I know. I was just trying to so, follow Yes, yes. Yes, you could. Yes, that's an excellent question. Thank you. So, yeah, the question mark is shorthand for the optional angle bracket string. I'm going to do that right now, because he's inspired me. <laughs> look at that. Uh -huh. Just look at that. All right. Let's see, if I ever, No, let's not go there. This is, <laughs> so anyway, let's just see if I can dive in. Uh, this, for those who want to geek out on this a little bit with me, this is in a, in a new... Well, yeah, it's a generic. It's an optional generic, and the, the whole thing is a genericized new blah, blah, blah. It solves nails. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a question? I was going to ask, um, are the types in angle brackets what we in Java would call reifiable? In other words, it doesn't type erase. At run, you know, at runtime, you lose that. Does Swift remember that? I don't know. So it doesn't go down to, so Swift doesn't use a JVM. Right. So it goes straight down to whatever it needs yeah. to. Uh, so the question essentially is, the thing that is running it, would it recognize, like in Java, Java Virtual Machine, when it does stuff like this, yeah. then by the time you're working with the thing that's running the code, it has no clue Ooh. that this is some special whatever, this is yeah. only a compilation thing. Most of the time you wouldn't care, um, although there are times, there are you, times you do. There are times you do. You, you care a lot. That's yeah. right. But this is an introductory, introductory thing, so I can totally sidestep. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> but well, uh, maybe it does because look yeah. at your print statement. It printed that there was an optional of string. Right. Right. So, so it, it must have remembered. There you go. I let you. Now that I think about it. <laughs> so our, the optional might store the type. All right. Yeah. That is well, then it must be compiling <laughs> doing something. Yeah, it's compiling down to something that the runtime system can recognize, and it somehow keeps at least enough information so it can be printed off. That's all. Yeah. Cool. What is the right, as then. any? Is that some uh, sort of type casting you're yes. doing, or what? Yes. Yes. Excellent question. So if I do this, it'll work but it shows me a warning, and in my world, warnings are errors. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's a software development phrase where it's like, if I've got so many errors, I can't work because I can't see what's really wrong and all that other stuff. So what this is saying is <coughs> when you're, you're printing out an optional, but who does that, right? Does, is what it's saying. So it's like, ooh, it's like, that? oh, so this is a really cool thing about using uh, the Apple tools when developing, it says, I can help you fix it. Let me do these different ways, you know, try it out. Okay. And so you can provide a default value. And you say, oh my gosh, so cool. But we don't want to do that. <laughs> so if we do the as any, it just says, this is on purpose. Excellent question. Okay, so those are optionals. 
Yeah, and that was a big deal, optionals. Because like coming from Objective C, the nil, if you call a method on a variable that ended up being nil, no. No? What is the thing? It. Seriously. So if I got I have <laughs> why do you so if I got an object and object oriented speak, if I have an object and I have a, a method on that object. So if I got an object called give me an object, Bruce. Car. What? Car. 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 Thanks, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> and if I want to start the car, yeah. so the method be start. Yeah. And objective C, if for some reason the variable that is supposed to be pointing at a car was pointing at nil, yeah. you'd be like nil and then start. Well, objective C would just ignore it. It'd be like, hey, you know, whatever, and just move on. And Swift, if I use, well, let's find out what happens. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Here, here's the optional string, etc. cetera. Uh, if I print this out, it'll say nil. So that first nil is this part up here. You could ignore this part down here for now. Let's just do that real quick. So it's just nil. It's this thing right up here on line seven. If I say, don't worry, I know what I'm doing. So if you use the exclamation point on an optional and saying, I guarantee you this is not pointing to a nil, just no. unwrap it. Well, it'll blow up. Because it, blow up. it says, you know, you shouldn't have done that. But yeah, Objective C would, would just. Uh... So, I mean, that was a big deal to people coming from Objective C. They're like, what? Hmm. Why? Okay. Hmm. But I understand. I mean, it's, it's a way to get safety, right? Because at a glance, you'd be like, I don't want my code just to fail silently. Yeah, never. Unless you've been using Objective C for like four years, then you're like, okay, you know what to do, what not to do, and uh, uh, whatever. Yeah. Anywho, so if I've got this optionals can be nil. So just to rehash real quick, since way up here, this optionals can be nil variable is pointing at nil. Okay. And so since it's pointing to nil. What this if let statement is doing is it's saying, well, if it's not nil, we'll store off the value. Well, it's nil, so it's going to do else print <coughs> is nil. But if it was not nil, it will take the value, stick it in some string of type string, so it's not an option. So then at this point, you can use it straight up. You don't have to worry about anything. And there's other ways to do this too. There's a thing called a guard let. And, and <coughs> I wanted to keep it at the intro level. Uh, but in any case, so let's change this value real quick. All right, so now we're pointing at something. And so since it's not nil anymore, then it is going to run uh, line 14, which is print the value. Okay. Kind of weird syntax. That's okay. We still love it. All right, for loops, uh, nothing special at a glance. So I jazzed it up. <laughs> so this is just saying, uh, using this variable i that will be changing the value of i, we're going to go from 10 to almost 20. <laughs> so it'll go from 10 to 19 inclusive, or 10 to 20 exclusive. And then it'll do this stuff in between these brackets. Now here, what we're doing is we're like, whatever value it is, let's like multiply it like crazy, and print out the value. Print it though, so it's a big number, a few big numbers. And the playground. So this is showing off playground because it's fun. Anyway, so at a glance, here's the values. At the playground, we'll take this expression, which is a fancy way of just saying all this stuff, and it says, you know, what is the end result of this expression? And whatever it is, I'm going to plot it here, and so as it's going over the for loop, it's like, well, this is where it is on the graph for 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19, it stops at 19, right? and so it goes up. So I played with this forever because I wanted an interesting curve. Is that one of those, uh, 
raw versus rendered things? This, th that's a good question. Ugh. Way over here. This is what you get when you, so it's automatically rendering it as part of the playground. At a high level, does that answer your question? Yep. That's good. So for two for two. All right. <laughs> <laughs> would you put the source code to be it to render? I'm sorry, what? What did you put in the source code so we see a graph? Oh, yeah, what's the source code for the graph thing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just sitting here and I'm like, what, yeah. did you just type that in and knew, how did it know to graph it? Right. So first, yeah, I didn't write the code to make the graph happen. That's for free. <laughs> That's just because I'm in a playground. Um, best name ever. So it knew because I've got this setting in here that says something like show the stuff, right? <laughs> show <laughs> stuff. Somewhere in here. Show, show the stuff. Technical. Show stuff. Show stuff. But why show didn't it trigger stuff. in the other? Um, it didn't trigger in the other one. Yeah. So the other one. Well, maybe there wasn't something you could plot. How do you plot an optional? Point. Yeah. So yeah. let me let me try this. There we go. Bring that thing in. Um, here, let me go to this thing real quick. So the question is, if I got something equal 34, let's say, let's say if I go whatever equals 3 times 34, like when do I start seeing stuff, right? Yeah. How does it know? So, as soon as it compiles, oh wait, uh -huh. I have to type code that compiles. <laughs> there we go. So as soon as it has an expression it can evaluate, there's these things on the side. So if I eyeball it, this is 34. If I do this, it'll show 34 down here. So technically this thing is called a result. <laughs> okay. okay. Who knew? So what I did is I set it up. So the real answer to your question is I had this pre-selected. <laughs> okay. To show the cool graph. Because even though this is exciting, it's not as exciting as a graph. Well there you go. So Swift has braces but no semicolons at the end of the line. Yes, unless I want them. Oh, very mean things. So, so I can uh, think call it optional? I can do they are optional as long as I have one line at a time. So I could do oh. I could do that. Uh -huh. Okay. If I take off the semicolon and that's all one line, it'll blow up. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. like it. Okay. Yeah, big question. All right. It doesn't care about white space. It's not like Python or something. Right. But it, it didn't show I'm being left behind rapidly, but it didn't show that as a syntax error, it showed it as a runtime error. So, could, you're saying that because I, like, hit this button? <laughs> well, there was, a, there was a moment there when... Oh, sorry, let me get the error. I'm forcing compilation by saying run. So I'm like saying build run. Okay. That, yeah, good question. Uh, if I technically, see how are we gonna Let's keep going. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think if I like would have just sat on it, it would have said, okay, I built this thing and it's not working out. But the playground by its very nature is I want to build run real fast. In, in my day job, I would sometimes just say build and it would be accomplished now. Okay, so the switch statement. So there's some cool things about the switch statement in Swift. So uh, the general concept of the switch statement is if I've got a variable, I want to say, based upon the value of this variable, I'm going to go do the right thing. So like, if this is value 1, I'm going to print out 1, which if I do that real quick, it will do that. 1, ignore that. 
It doesn't drop through. There's no break. That's at right. The case. Exactly. That's Which right. exactly what I was about to say. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Don't do that. I mean, I like that. Okay, it's okay. Right. I think that's awesome. That means sometimes people job. don't like that. <laughs> it means I'm on the game. Okay, so and then if I do a 12, it'll fall into this range of 10 to 19 inclusive. Notice there's these three dots as opposed to dot dot less less than zero. Right. And they do a good job. They try so hard. Okay. So I love these numbers, and then if I didn't have anything that matched, it would just do the default and it would say whatever. Okay. Are you limited to integers that you can switch on? Can you switch on a string or That's other a great problems? question. Let's yeah, go over to the All right, so here we have the string. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I did that fast. <laughs> Boy, that's, you're really good at answering my questions. You are so <laughs> fast. <laughs> <laughs> there is so fast. There's an anti pattern if you have, um, that's a good question. If you have like four different switch statements that could be a code smell to where you might want to use like inheritance or some other form that takes advantage of polymorphism. Yeah. So, yeah, that's yeah. a good question. But uh, yeah, for a single switch uh, situation, it may be just fine. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. So, here's a string. So, if it's like, okay. Based on the value of this, if that string said knock, it would pronounce knock. So you know, knock, knock, yeah. who's there? Etch, etch who? Uh, <laughs> etch who? <you. laughs> so there you go. Does it demand that you have a default? Will compile without the default? It requires that you have a default because string could be any value. There you so, go. Yeah. That's good. You just have oh, it have doesn't it. just drop out the bottom if it doesn't match. You have to have a default. Exactly. Like, do you have to have 29 and 30 or just 29? 29 and 30 or just 29? You have to have 29 and 30. Oh, well, you go. Because, yes, you do. Because. <laughs> Who's teaching the class here? Because <laughs> in SWIFT it says if you. <laughs> If you're if you're missing the thing, you're probably making a mistake. Delete 29. Okay, but delete 29. Okay. Now yeah, what does right. it do? I take requests. This is good. Uh, because oh, since the like value it. since the value string could be anything, she, she gets it. Since the value of the string could be anything, <laughs> it wants to make sure you got all your cases covered. Okay. No pun intended. But if it's an enum and you covered every case, then you don't need it. Okay. If, if you've covered every case yeah. using enum, which we haven't discussed yet. Oh. Don't need the <laughs> I've never so seen a switch on a string. <laughs> uh, no, that's a good question because I don't actually use one a one switch in being in my thing, but we'll find out. Yeah. Now, if you switch on an optional and it's nil encapsulating. Right. right. That gets into some deeper stuff, which I'm skipping over. To. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I have a question instead of questioning you out. Yeah. I, I, I'm well, what, if, what if you have more than one thing you say, oh, for one, two, three, four, five, I want to do this? Not, not, not like one dot, 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 five, but like one, five hundred, nine, nine, seven, nine, eight. So, you can, I assume the expressions work because that's what's called. Yeah. Right. Range. So, so I'm sure I understand the question. So yeah. In this case, so for three, I want to do some. For 500, I want to do the same thing. For 700, I want to do the same thing. In one case, they can you do that? He said, yes. or he said, can you use comma, so you can say three comma one? There you go. Yes. Yes, but not, but not a full expression or just? You can't put one in there because one's already in there, I think. Yeah. So yeah. Is, is that cover a lot? So if I do two, then it'll do the love these numbers because it's two. So it's like two or it's in the range of 10 to 19. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about greater than? <laughs> That's my last question. Maybe. I have not run into the case where I want to use a greater than in a case. <laughs> Can you call a variable something in your well, I have a variable in that case, so if it's the case three, it's a variable. And it's got to match right. the value of that. I still There's say a voice voice <laughs> Oh, such a pure person. <laughs> we've, we've worked together, I can do this. Jeez. We're friends. Alright, anyway. <laughs> One more question about that. Yeah. Say I don't say if it's in the default case, I just don't want to do anything. It's right. kind of like kind of like a blank statement in the way that like Python has class. Semicolon. Just a semicolon. <laughs> just, you can just you can just a semicolon. Oh. Yeah. Thank you for asking that. So I can uh, I can do that. And so default doesn't oh. have to be. Oh. oh. <laughs> Why are you listening to me? The compiler takes the truth. 
So error semicolon statements are not uh, Oh, break. Sorry. Ah. Uh, semicolons for something else. Okay. Break. Okay. Cool. All right. And default does not have to be the last one. I'm moving on. <laughs> We're done with that. All the play now. <laughs> you, can, you can have one too. <laughs> exactly. All right. All right. So, so tuples. So the concept of a tuple is if I want to group a bunch of numbers together, um, I just want to group them. Right? I don't want to make a whole type out of it or whatever. So uh, in this case, I have four integers and I want them together in all kinds of weather. So if I print it out, then it shows 4294 in a tuple. Now here, I have two strings. Okay, so the first string is first, and the second string is second, and they're in a tuple, <coughs> that is a thing. So we print out the couple strings. So down here you can see the first, second tuple getting printed out. In this line 11, that's the syntax for saying, I want the first value in the tuple. Okay. In line 11, it's like, I want the second one. Okay. So if there were like three tuples, I could say dot two and so on. Okay. You know? And that's an expression after the period, or does it have to be a constant? This is what I do to get the values out. <laughs> right. <laughs> Moving on. I'm, I'm a little constrained by time. It's like okay. I want to show you some other cool stuff. First, we got to There's nine. more stuff than yeah. six things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was the question. Are you just heckling me? I'm heckling. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> We're friends. So I love that guy. Only you'll okay. get this done in times if you ignore me. <laughs> well, actually, I mean, when I, we have one presentation tonight. I have this technically ended at nine or something, but. We'll make it last just long enough. <laughs> okay, so there is, um, and actually soon there's actually a time check code example here, which is fun. So here we have uh, the string tuple stuff, and uh, so it shows something cool because it says, okay, if I have the exact case of a tuple with a first and a second, I want to do this line. But if it doesn't exactly match that because the second tuple doesn't say the word second, it'll fall into this case down here. So let's see that real quick. So right now it's printing off, what is it printing off? It's printing off wow, because the first and second match. So I'm going to change, where is this thing? Way up here. Something else. So it no longer is matching uh, this thing here. So now since it's not matching that, that, oh, sorry about moving around. So this is not matching that, it says, got the first for sure. Because it's matching the case on line 20. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then of course the follow due to phone. Cool, all right. Why would you use tuples over a dictionary? Serious question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask me any question you wish. So, you want to use a tuple like a good example of using a tuple is if I'm calling a function and I want to return two values, okay. then I could just do a tuple. If I do a dictionary, then it's like, okay, I got the dictionary, and now I'm going to see if there is, you know, using a key, mm -hmm. right, I'm going to pull the value. What would the key be? Probably first, the word first or something. And it'll be an optional. So then you want to unlock <laughs> the optional. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll be like, this isn't so swift. I've seen tuples a lot of mathematics too. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. That's true. <coughs> All right. Functions. For those who have seen functions in other languages, um, the basic stuff is very similar. In Swift, functions are first class citizens, which the first time someone said that, I'm like, that sounds impressive. What does that mean? <laughs> but, uh, you can do cool stuff with it is what it means. So you can take a function, like this function, this sum function is the function, right? It is pointing at the function. The function in this case is an empty body. So this would normally be like, you know, yay big and put your code in it, right? So you can store the function in a variable and then you can call it. That's fun. And so here's an example on line 10 of some function with an argument. 
Uh, that looks a little weird because it's wrapping. There you go. So the argument is called something. It is a type string. And it just prints it out and puts a new line. That's what you use if you want a new line. The backslash n means new line. Uh, the reason I wanted that is because after print me, <coughs> I wanted a blank line. So you'll see that down here. So here's the sum function. All right, I can't skip this. This is a function. It returns a value. The value is a type string. In this case, it's the hard-coded string. OK. All right, anyway, I'm calling the function here. As you remember, it doesn't do anything. Right? It's this big empty thing up here. It does nothing. Down here, it's calling the sum function with args. We know it's one arg. And it does the print me thing. And then down here, the function is getting called here, and we're using the return value, and then just printing off the return value. So it says OK. Is the, is the return value on the, uh, the one that's just printing, is that an implicit nil return? It is, that is a great question. It is an implicit void. Void. But mm. conceptually, exactly the okay. same thing. So I want to show this because that is a great question. Mm. Notice the compilation. Uh, yeah, so if a function does not return any values, otherwise known as void, you can just leave off the arrow void. Which that kind of knowledge is really handy for closures when you get into advanced stuff. Which we'll cover closures, but um, okay. probably not uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, watching the clock. So this is a good example of if I got like a date object. So if you create a date object with no arguments, it'll just say, <coughs> give me the current date and time. So that date, open close parentheses, is the current date. And what's happening here is it is saying, I'm going to call, oh, it's kind of hard to see this. Yeah. I have an object that's formatter, date formatter, and I'm going to say I want this kind of style, and it'll go ahead and turn off the string. But really the purpose of this is for me to see what time it is. So there you go. The time is 7.51. <laughs> um, but just to drive home the point, that would be the long version. I've changed in that. Let's see, 7.51.59 p.m. CDT, that looks funny, and short does not have CDT. So there you go. Four seconds. Yeah. And, and no seconds. Yeah, good. And it's one minute. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what's the type of formatter.time style? Is it an enum and is short some sort of enum value or constants? What are we looking at? Enum. Enum. Yeah, okay. if I dive in, so I, I've just entered into the matrix. No, the code. <laughs> <laughs> the Apple code. So it is a type date for date formatter. That's style. style. So it is a new mm. called style. Okay. It has these cases. And uh, yeah, it's part of a thing that we haven't gone over yet. It's an extension of a thing that we haven't gone over yet. So that's the cool thing about Swift and Apple code is you're like, you know what, I just want to see what's going on under the hood. You just, with a button, you just dive on in. You're like, oh, it's this thing. Well, that's cool. Oh, I can use that kind of concept in my custom code over here. Okay. So yeah, the code teaches. Oh, I saw one. something. Wow. There's two people. Uh, I think Bruce had his hand oh, up. Okay. Um, I saw something you had just for a split second over on the right. And it said something like NS date or something. It's, that's uh, like coming from like next step, yep. legacy, what's going on really. here? Yes. He's saying the truth. Oh, okay. It, was that you? Yes. So yeah, it, Apple way, way, way back in the day, there was this company called Next. Yeah. And they created some code, and they called their stuff Next, this, that, and the other thing. Yeah. Uh, it's when they weren't part of Apple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Apple sucked them in later, and billions of dollars. Billions of dollars. Yeah. Job. Steve Jobs was thrown out at some point, then he came back. Right. There's a whole okay. movie about. Yeah. <laughs> so there's. So it's calling 
next step, objective C stuff underneath yes. this beautiful syntax. Yes. <laughs> yes. So that's a good point. So even though you can dive into under the hood a little bit and see some of the Swift code, yeah. if you go far enough um, under certain circumstances, not all circumstances, you'll run into Objective C code, uh, and you know, then it's like, like if I print off the value of a string and I end up in Objective C code, it'll be like N C something string, right? But a lot of it is just pure Swift. So you, as you know, when I've been printing this stuff off, it hasn't like done strange C-like syntax stuff, right? Like you actually saw optional less than sign. Yeah. So it's nice and clean. But if you get into like graphics kind of okay. stuff and start printing off stuff, then yeah, you'll start seeing you'll start more seeing. stuff under the hood. Yeah, yeah, fun times. All right, so this is the concept of a class. Uh, so I'm gonna lean a little bit, you know, for those who have seen a class in Java, it's the same kind of concept. It has all the concepts of uh, inheritance and, and other stuff. But anyway, here's a simple example of a class. And it's got a method called some function, which prints out success. So here we are creating an object instance of this class. Uh, well, for those who don't know what a class is, I mean, the purpose of a class is I can create multiple object instances of this one class. Right, it's like the template. You encapsulate all that crap you put in the switch thing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Swiss, 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 yeah. Yeah, there you go. All right, settle down now. <laughs> uh, you're awesome, Chris. All right, so anyway, I got an object instance, and I'm calling some function on the object, and it prints off success. <laughs> so that's a great part about this group. Like, you know, you get to know everyone's name, you're like, yeah. It's like, so it looks like family. Okay, so we got an enumeration here, a simple one, called fruit, and there's different types of fruit, apple, oranges, grapes. And so here we're declaring a variable of type fruit, and we are assigning the value of apple. Uh, to be clear, it could also be fruit.apple, that's its full name. But since it knows it's of type fruit, Okay. Then you could just use the dot apple. And so here's a kind of a more realistic example here. So this is an enumeration called API Gateway Error. So as, as you may know, you know, out there in the HTTP land of the World Wide Web, if you get a 404, you probably mistyped your URL. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in technically in HTTP status world, you know, that means mm -hmm. not found. Not found. Exactly. So what I'm doing with this enumeration is I'm saying, I want this enumeration backed by integers. So this enumeration is backed by int. int. And what that gives me the ability to do is I can then assign values, as you see here in line 12, where I have an unknown error of 0, nor that guy, but I have not found to 404, or the server blew up, and it's giving me a 500. So down here, let's pretend that I got from the server, like I'm a client, right? I'm calling out to a server, and I got a 404 back, then I could just throw that value straight into this API gateway error, and uh, it's gonna wrap no matter what. And so it's taking this value that's in the variable and changing it into an enum. I didn't have to write anything special, you know, there's no switch statement, right, Chris? No switch statement, all right. He's making me a believer. He's converting me. Um, and uh, so now I got this enum. And so if I print this off, then it's showing, OK, API gateway error, not found. So that's cool. So if this was a 500, so now I have an API gateway error, internal server error. So if it was a 501, it's going to be this unknown error. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, and then you can get 
fancier yeah. and, and actually would like in, in realistic life I would be using um, probably a third party framework like Alamo Fire is very popular okay. and it would automatically handle some of this and, and so, some of this it would handle some of the ranges of uh, 500, 501, 5 whatever but I would still want to write code to translate from this stuff into enums. Hmm. So if you left out that question mark, question mark, dot unknown error and yep. you tried running it, does it blow up? Yes, good question. No. No. That answer, good question. You, <laughs> nil. So, okay. It's nil. So oh. it, it became an optional. Now if I had said that this is of type that, not optional, it'll blow up. Okay. Because it says, well, you could be giving me a bogus number that I don't match on, and actually we do, right? So now if I run this because I've made it an optional, it won't blow up. It just makes it nil. Yeah, it, it makes it nil. It makes it nil, right, because you can't find a match. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Made me think. So where are we with uh, like library module mm -hmm. landscape with this? Are, are, are they how long has how long has Swift been going? Right. Yeah. Good question. Uh, so Swift's been going for about three years. It goes back to that slide in the 2014. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, it's funny because at Apple they had been working on it for like three years or something like that. So they, so um, some people say, you know. Before they released it. Before they released it. Before they released yeah. it. Yeah, and it, it evolved very quickly. There were some big kind of changes. Um, it's settled down a lot over the last year. And so now they're at the stage of tweak this, tweak that kind of deal. Uh, when it comes to libraries, uh, the most popular dependency management thing in the iOS space is stuff like CocoaPods. But uh, Apple has worked on their own dependency management. Uh, anyway, dependency management is, I have a bunch of code I want to use written by other people, a bunch of libraries. And so Couple Pods is like one of the most popular, although it's kind of doing crazy stuff under the hood a little bit. I like that name. It almost sounds like Cocoa Puffs. I know. Yeah. It makes me should have Puffs. That's what I'm saying. I'm just gonna have to eat, and someone else will have to run this thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've been talking about enumerations. Uh, now let's talk about something a little bit more advanced. So you can have enumerations. You know, again, enumerations like different types of fruit, but you can have associated values with it, which is really cool. So here's a simple enumeration. So I got enumeration state. It's got three different cases that are possible. Started, succeeded, failed. And then here we have a second enumeration, and it's called action state. And in one of its cases, called state, it can hold different states. Okay. <laughs> kind of deep. So uh, the concept behind this is, if I have an action that I want to be able to cancel, I can capture this concept this way. Like, if I wanted an action and I never wanted to cancel it, I could just do this, right? It would be, okay, I started the action, you know, it got done, so it succeeded or it failed. But if I wanted the ability to cancel, then you can capture that concept using action state. So this, this code down here is just the ability to set the state and the ability to cancel. We're going to skip over that. You've seen this. This is just print out the stuff, right? So you've seen this already. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Move along. Um, what this is doing is this will create this will create an action and we haven't done anything to it yet. Uh, let me move that up. The action. So the action is automatically started. And then we're saying, hey, I want this action to be failed, like on line 51. So like, okay, let's fail the action. And we print it off, and it says failed. I was, you know what, changed my mind. It succeeded. OK, it succeeded. And then, you know, like, oh, yeah, let's just cancel. Let's forget the whole thing. And so then down here, 
you see it's, it's canceled. So at a high level, that's the concept of an enumeration with an associated value. Uh, the, the example that Apple gives in this documentation is that you can uh, do like scanning barcodes or whatever, and maybe there's a certain kind of barcode. You know, barcode like it's on grocery store stuff, right? And you're like, oh, well, there's four different values associated with this barcode I want to store. So it's like, it's this kind of barcode, and it has these four values. Well, I thought that was kind of complex. So, yeah, I didn't like that example. So I can't. Actually, I got it from Stack Overflow. It off in, a, in a good way, here is the, uh, the actual Stack Overflow. Uh, in my slides at the end, I actually have a URL to this playground. So this is all available to you. It's publicly available. So we can play with that switch statement all we want. <laughs> That's right. If you have a Mac. If you have a Mac. Or yeah, the barrier to entry requiring a Mac. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm already having dependency issues. You need uh, Xcode 8.3, which means you need uh, Sierra. Yes, you have to use the latest stuff. No, well, not the latest stuff. You stuff, use. man. You have to keep Ooh. up with Apple, Apple, you know Apple. Yeah, that's Apple. <laughs> they got a good business model going. Oh, on. yeah. Okay, so the concept of a closure. Uh, so for those who don't know, uh, the cool thing about a closure is you can have a block of code, and if there's a variable that's outside of that block of code, then the block of code can access the variable that's outside of the block of code, mm -hmm. so it closes around it. So in this case, line five, we have a variable called sum bar, and then we have this closure that's been defined, and it's accessing the sum bar, even though this is a block of code. You know, that can be used wherever. So for simplicity's sakes, we're just calling this closure. Some closure, parentheses. And you may say, well, that looks exactly like a function. <laughs> because, <laughs> so yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yes. So that's a good point. The, the place where you would normally use a closure is like if I'm calling a, a server, right? And I want some sort of a callback thing, meaning that when the server uh, finally gets back to me, when it finally gets back to me, then it will call this closure, this block of code. Because you know, if I'm a client and I'm calling a server, it's asynchronous, meaning it doesn't immediately give me the value. It has to go over the wire and do its thing on the server and then come back. Everything about third party? I'm sorry, what? Third party, if we're accessing other services. Uh, well, I mean, you can have your own server. I, I could write the client code, yes. and then I could have a, a, a server over there, okay. and uh, it could be running Java or Swift or whatever. And so I'm, I'm just saying, I'm calling some URL, you know, that's associated with a specific thing on the server, and then it gives me a value back. Okay. And so, and the thing is, is that it typically you don't want your code to. We're kind of getting deep. But typically, you don't want your code to like stop and wait for the server to come back. You know, you want the user interface to be responsive. Uh, you don't want it to hang. Mm -hmm. So if you ever use a thing and you're like, oh, it's contacting the server and everything freezes, they're not doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, closures are useful for that kind of asynchronous uh, scenario. Okay. Call on server. And you can pass parameters to the closure and, and all of that. And yeah. Yes. Yeah, so and make what like arrows like it's a lambda or whatever. Yeah, so you can you can get a little fancy here. Uh, we can have let's see, we'll be a good example. Um, well let's say we got some value. Let's say if it's a type int. Maybe that's how much you're gonna add to some bar. And let's add say I'm just gonna say boy, just to cop out here a little bit. <laughs> okay. Ooh, double fancy arrow. Is that what that is? Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So let's, let's make sure it's not making a lot of noise. So, so for some advanced closure food, uh, what we're saying is that when so the definition 
actually the declaration. The type of closure that we're dealing with here is such that the caller has to pass in a value. Okay. You asked for it, you get it. Yeah. <laughs> so you have yeah. to pass in a number, which is this guy, and then we can use that guy. So you know, we you can, can say add it to some bar. Yeah. That's true. Okay, that's a good point. I totally could have done this. <laughs> it's part of the example. You just so did. We call you it just did. We just did. So when you call that closure, I guess, with a, a different type, what happens? Yeah. So if I do a string? Yeah. yeah. It'll blow up. It'll blow up. Or I am wrong. Let's find out. It's kind of red. Yeah, it's, it's very unhappy. And yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> well, probably can't Remember find that nasty nothing. stuff we were talking about? Yeah, here Perfect. it comes. Yeah. Uh, by the way, UIKit is the library from Apple that makes user interface stuff happen. UI, user interface. Okay. Since you showed us before that a function can be assigned to a constant, uh, what's the, like, why would you use a closure instead of a function? Right. Because right. Yeah. I like you said the same thing. So if, like if I'm just doing an API call or something like that, mm -hmm. let me back up. A function is actually a special kind of closure. Mm -hmm. It's a closure with a name. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I'm just calling an API thing and I just want this block of code to get called when the server gets back to me, I don't actually need to name the closure. If you're not reusing it in other places. I'm not, if I'm not reusing it in other places. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yes, excellent. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have said it better myself. So I guess things will get really fun when you have Closures as return values from other closures. Closureception. <laughs> yeah. Inception. <laughs> yeah. So it's a type of a so function. It's a type yeah. of closure being oh has Yeah, same. where you return a closure from the. Deals that's just a simple value. Yeah. I don't know what people are saying. I'm coding. Oh. <laughs> Oh, a print is a, is a function this? I'm guessing. It's, it's well, uh, so true, Bruce. That's so. Hold on, what am I doing here? It should, it should, it should be so true, Bruce. So true. Some true and. So, some you got true. so true on line 12 and some true on line 12. Like a team typo. Yeah. So, so true, Bruce, equals some closure. So the result of this is a string, right? Yeah, you can print the string. My question was if you want to return a closure as the return value uh, from the closure. Let me see if I can make this work first. Okay. <laughs> well, it's not because 13 is so. Yeah, 13 so. should just be so. Oh, You're running me out of one. There you go. That's what Chris has been trying to tell me. Because yeah. you said yeah. typo. Like, yeah. Two or three times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. So your question, Bruce, was? Was if I want to return a closure from the closure. Yeah. Then you're uh, in some deep geek. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> so you can totally do it and you can return a, a type. You can, uh, with Swift, you can even use what's called a, a type alias. So you can oh. say, this really complicated thing, yeah. I'm going to give it a name. And so that you could say, instead of like instead of like this, or like to your point, Bruce, instead of returning a string, if I were to return a closure, sure. yeah. I would define the closure sure. type and give it a name. And then I would use that name, name where string return. is. Right now, that's that. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I've actually seen that in like okay. RX Swift kind of stuff. Oh. But I mean, that's when you're getting into like, I'm creating a framework that people are using. And, <laughs> and uh, that's not intro. Okay. That's not intro. Okay. You are ready to make frameworks, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> I make frameworks, just not in Swift. <laughs> okay, you're ready to make frameworks in Swift. <laughs> I, I knew I should have <laughs> All right, so this is an example real quick of a struct. So the difference between a struct and a class in Swift is in a struct, if I've got some struct, like a, you know, a variable called some struct, and I assign that to something else, what it'll do is it'll make a copy of it. Okay. So with a class, if I say, okay, changing variables, if I say x equals y, and y is pointing at a, some object, well then x will end up pointing at the exact same Sorry. object. So like if I say, you know, y dot change this thing, and I say x dot change this thing, I'm changing the same object. With a struct, if, if I say, 
I'm going to do different variable names. Okay. If I say B equals this struct, and I say A equals B, it does it creates a brand new struct. Right. Copies the values copy. over. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm manipulating, you know, A and B, they're two different things. They're like apples and bananas, two different things. Gotcha. Now is that nested when you nest structs inside of structs and classes inside of structs oh. and you know? <laughs> I can answer what? that only if you can wrap it. <laughs> so if you can, okay. So for the structs, it'll copy, and for the classes, it'll just do reference assignments. So the the, the simple the, the, the simplest example that you're saying is can I put a struct in a struct? Yeah, and then when you assign that, what's it? So yes, I can. Okay, and then when you do the assignment, it'll copy I, both I, structs. Not in my day job. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question, but I mean, we, can, we can play with it after the okay, presentation. All right. Go ahead. My, my playground is your playground. Okay, we can, okay, we can totally ahead. do this. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, anyway, so generics. Yeah, generics. That's the cool thing, by the way, about playground, is you can do this generics, right? You got some documentation here and code. Think about that. That's so cool. Uh, I will not show you now, but that took, that took, um, this word? References. Uh, discipline, yes. Okay, so basically here's a swap two values generic function. So you know it's a generic, generic function because it has this less than sign, a T, and a greater than sign. And what that's saying is I want swap two values function to work for any type, but I need some sort of a name for this type, so we're going to call it T. So, you know, in a non-generic non function, this would be like string, this would be like string, mm -hmm. ignore the in-out part for what I'm saying right now. Uh, but since we want to work for strings and ints and all kinds of things, then we have that T. It could be anything you want, it doesn't have to be exactly T. So, in-out, well, the point of in-out is I'm I'm calling a function, and I want you to be able to change the values of what I'm passing in. So normally in Swift, without that, if I pass it in and I changed it, it would really change it, right? So like, mm -hmm. if, 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 if this in-out stuff was not there and these ampersands were not there, then this code would effectively do nothing. Yeah, it, I get yeah. That. It's call by value versus call by reference. Exactly. Yeah. That is true. So yeah, this is call by reference. And so since it's doing something funky like that, because this yeah. doesn't happen too often, then it says, I'm going to make you put the ampersand in there. Because if you don't, you get a compilation error. So if I run this, so you see on line 13, it says first equals three. Well, when you run it, it says first equals four, because it's swapping. Swap the two values. Okay, let's move on. Inheritance. Uh, the concept of inheritance reflects the is a relationship. And so this specific example is I've got a toy and I got a specific kind of toy called a fidget spinner. You may have heard of it. Um, so all toys, they have a cost. And a fidget spinner, since it's a toy, it has a cost. But it also has a method called spin. And since a fidget spinner is a toy, well, it can also access this variable called cost. So this is a relationship. So here we're just saying, create me a new fidget spinner and store it into the variable called sell fidget spinner. And since it's a toy, we can set the cost and the cost is $6.99, which is a real thing out there. I looked it up. And so if I do some fidget spinner spin, it will print out, it will run that code. And it'll say, that's $6.99 spinning there. You can get them cheaper. I wanted to find something more expensive than the cheapies. All right, protocols. So in Java, for those who use Java, a protocol is similar to an interface. Uh, the purpose of a protocol is I'm declaring the certain kinds of functions. A 
properties. In other languages, you'd call them attributes. Um, so like a Java interface. So, so you got the functions here. All right, well here we have a class, and we're saying this class conforms to this protocol. In Java, it would be this class exactly. This class implements this interface. Mm -hmm. And so we have some function, and we're printing it out. If we didn't have this code, and we're saying we're conforming this protocol, that's a compilation error. Because we want to be guaranteed that if I have a thing that is of type some protocol, that we, ha that we know that this some funk is, is happening there, right? That it's going to be there. So if I run this, it'll say stuff. <laughs> so we're creating an instance of this class that conforms to the protocol, and we're putting it into the variable of the protocol type. And if you don't get it at a glance, don't worry about it. Like, this kind of stuff would be normally, like, several classes at a university, right? right. You'd have homework, right? right? So you quiz people over the visibility. Like, is, is, are they public by default or private oh, or yeah, package totally private? Yeah, totally passing over uh, visibility, yeah. also known as accessibility. Right? Yeah. So by default, it's called uh, internal visibility, which means oh. anywhere inside of this bunch of code called a module, everything can access everything. You, you can have private functions and private properties. So yeah, you can make things private. And there's a few others. That, Static. So you can have class functions. All right. <laughs> All right. You can have, because that's yeah, Java. Yeah, the same static. idea. You can have class functions. So you can say some class dot and call the function. And it is the purpose of the class function is that it belongs to the class, not any specific object instance. Okay. And I noticed you did not use any new operator. That's right when you created that object. That's right. It's just magically new. Yeah. Oh. None of that okay. NEW space stuff. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm loving it. They took, uh, you know, when they were making Swift, they took some concepts from Ruby yeah. and other things, and Java probably, okay. and other, just other stuff they borrowed. Yeah, it's awesome. Seems to be exactly similar to Kotlin. Yeah, it looks very similar to Kotlin. Very, very yeah. similar. Yeah. Is exactly yeah. like Kotlin. Right. Which came first? Uh, this one. I think they. I think Kotlin. this one. I think, I think they yeah. started with. I don't know. How many was that for? Four, four, five years. They actually announced it now. Officially now, though. Yeah. Officially, yeah. But it was there. So Long Swift. Time. Swift was released to the general public in 2014. I think they started working on it in Apple like 2010. Okay. I. You know, it doesn't matter who came first. Is, They're all stealing from each other. Yep. Is there an implied <laughs> super class for every class? Like in Java, everything inherits from an object. So is there like a parent class that's implied of every class that's like object? You know, it's all single inheritance, multiple protocols. So I can object. create a class that, so the answer is no. I can create a class that is not implicitly derived from anything. From anything. But in Objective C, everything derives from that's object. That's, that's right. right. So it's like, uh, it's yeah. So it's different. Yeah. Does that have compatibility implications if you're trying to call old next step code? Yeah. Yeah. They write books on compatibility issues between Objective C and Squid. However, <laughs> yeah. um, that could. Once you once you've got the basics down, it is not too good. All right, okay. Let's move on. So we're at 8.23, I'm shooting for 8.30-ish, you know, but... Are you going to show us an app? Yeah. You have time for that? I, I will show you this example code. I will show you a hint of code that's similar to what we use at Carfax. Okay. And then we can discuss informally after the presentation whatever you want to discuss. <laughs> you don't have anything in the simulator or anything? Uh, Let's keep going. Okay. I can show you code that isn't directly from there. <laughs> okay, anyway, here's a protocol. It's called spell castable. It's got a function called cast spell. What is the purpose of this? The purpose of this is to show you that 
you can create default implementation for the protocol. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Can do that. In Java 8, you can do that too. Yeah. But not when you think about the set. No. Took a while. Took a while. Took a while. Took a while. We had to steal from the Swift. All right. We had to steal that from the Swift. Yeah. Now, Java's awesome because it is evolving and it's got yeah. a process for. Yeah, the so, yeah. Java, Java's done okay. I yeah. like Java too. Yeah, we had to. So here we have steal. what we call eatable. It's got funk, eat. And so if we go down yeah. here, the default implementation of an eatable eat is print eating. So, so the, the point of this is to show that. So, as you saw with the toy example with inheritance, when you had a fidget spinner that is a toy, you only get one shot at inheritance, right? You can't say this is one of these, and it's a boat. And it's a car, and it's all these things, because mm -hmm. that just wouldn't make sense. But you can do multiple protocols. But what you can do with protocols, yes, you can do multiple protocols, and the protocols can have default implementation. Mm -hmm. So then you're, what that is known in the world is called mix-in kind of concept, right? Where you could say, okay, I've got this thing, I'm going to mix in this functionality, mix in this functionality. And so then okay. you and, can And apply when the concerns. default implementations conflict, what do you get? The, yeah, it resolves it. So <laughs> if, if I've got, if you do everything correctly, yeah. and then if I got some implementation in the class wizard, then it should do the codes in the class wizard. But if you, it gets complicated. <laughs> if, you, if you leave off, I've, I've seen the case where people have actually added implementation, but they didn't put it in the protocol and it compiled, and they're like, is that a bug? So. Let's not go there right now. <laughs> anyway, you can make some functionality. So this example shows that, and I'm doing this all in one shot. I'm creating a wizard object, and then I'm calling cast spell on the object. And it's a spell cast. And since I've also mixed in eatable, like it's got the spell casting functionality, it's also got the eatable functionality. Mm -hmm. And so I can also say, okay, on a wizard, I can say eat. And so it says, okay, spell cast, eating, eat, and then the, this guy, barbarian, eat. But well, he's eating too. But he can't cast any spells because he's a barbarian. So he doesn't have any spell cast ability. I'm declaring that a word. That is the end. Now we're almost done. So this is a complex example. I just want to show you. Here's an enumeration. It is inheriting from another enumeration, so that enumerations has an inheritance. Here's a case that we understand. And for this case, it has an associated value. Here's a property, which is similar to attribute in other languages. The return type, the type associated with this property is HTTP method. This is a computed value. This is a bunch of code that whenever someone calls this thing that um, is a property, it will run this code. Cool. So switch, self, all that jazz. So to the user of this, it looks just like a property. Sort of like that cost property on yeah. the toy. So that is very similar, but not exactly to code that we've used uh, at Carfax to handle different kinds of requests. That could almost replace functions, or could it? it, it, it it could, except if it replaced all functions, they'd look, it'd look, the code looked funky. <laughs> okay. So, by the way, Carmix is hiring. Uh, again, the slides are available. Uh, I created URLs just for you. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the top one takes you to all the jobs, or you can just go to carmix.com and click on careers. Then I also, for, I took the latest snapshot of them. The Columbia only ones would be this, or the developer ones, which are in multiple locations, are that. Awesome place to work. This also has some funny resources. <laughs> <laughs> I said it's an awesome place to work, especially since I'm not there anymore. Oh! <laughs> oh. 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 There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so again, the slides are going to be available, but there's some learning resources. And there's some more sources, like for example, images from pexels.com, which you can use without even referencing anyone if you, or you can if you want. So that's, that's cute. Yeah.
And that's the end of the whole thing. <laughs>